Oh. Differently though. Oh. All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. You glowing afternoon. today. You are glowing. You do not. You look like there's a whole new light over you versus the way you um yeah you looked earlier this week. Because we record now. Super <laughs> hyperactive frequency. So I have Prophetess <laughs> Moy here and um, frequency. And um, we're going to be discussing some information um, for the collective, no doubt. Do you guys want to say anything before I go into it? You can talk a little bit about yourself and your channels, and then we'll go on. Talana, you want to go first? You could go ahead. <clears throat> oh, frequency will go. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Frequency. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, it's okay. My channel is still um, being new and put together, but um, I'm Frequency, and I am emerging and uprising out of the deep, and for the collective, with regards to the many things that are coming that a lot of people are not aware of, they may have been sleeping, um, and not even aware that things have been coming to them for a very, very long time, and also keeping their gifts dormant. And so there is an emerging that's coming from within, and so look forward to my new channel coming soon. Awesome. Next. Okay. Uh, my, <laughs> my name is Kamoy. I think I am very, um, I have a YouTube channel um, for your inner voice. Um, and that is exactly what I do. I speak to the inner voice within. Um, uh, and I want to say I am not traditional in my teaching. Uh, however, I feel you, uh, as well as everyone else, has an internal compass that has, like, frequency, you know, um, has a, an internal frequency. <laughs> Um, and depending on where your frequency is tuned into, you will attract people like myself, um, um, Kim, and frequency, uh, because it is a time to wake up. So my job here is to help, I want to say, people get back in tune with their own internal frequency with, um, with source, with oneness. Um, and they, you know, and that's done in many unconditional, um, unconventional ways. Yeah, um, I use tarot, um, I use um, channeling, I use uh, Reiki healing, um, I also use um, uh, the knowledge of sound and electricity um, to help people into a greater level of uh, knowing and understanding within themselves and with the universe in which we dwell in. All right, so um, of course, I think that um, some of you know me, I am rising on uh, my channel on YouTube, but um, these two young ladies are fabulous and dear to my heart. Um, I've seen them grow by leaps and bounds. Um, they are peculiar people and um, that's what uh, people that have unique gifts um, usually demonstrate. They are not understood and um, not being understood is okay because that gives you um, an ally in the spirit. You run to the spirit because no one else understands you. And so we all um, have a core interest and ally in the spirit. And we are coming together to share some things, uh, again, to the collective so that they can know that they are not alone. In these times where um, you're having to face the truth of who you are, even when others have told you that Maybe um, you're dreaming and what you saw was not um, correct or it was not a good thing. It could have been someone said that um, you were crazy. And some people actually lose consciousness um, and they walk around sleeping because others have ridiculed what they seen um, not deemed as true. So we bring what is true in a unique way that has not been accepted. And... Um, so I asked them to come on today, and we'll probably do other um, quick jump-in videos. I want to say jump-in because that's what we're doing right now. Um, we're jumping in. A lot of people don't even understand the energy of the jump. So we're jumping in, and we're jumping over timelines. And um, it might be a quick jump or a scheduled jump. But today, um, I called them in because I saw something it brought tears to my eyes. Although it was beautiful, I know that they can 
break it down without me um, actually going in myself. So I was um, having a um, time of meditation and, um, you know, my guides were there with me. And um, I began to see people emerge from the sea. And it wasn't just that they emerged, they just kept coming in and they, they began to sit down. And they sat down as in a yoga style, but they sat down and it backed people up that was coming out of the sea. So that meant that there's consciousness that's backed up in the ocean that's waiting. And the ones that are sitting there are actually like waiting. Now, if I'm there and my guides are there, I can see what's happening. But what bothered me was the backup. It's like being on the 405 in California at three o'clock. Well, maybe it's moving now. Uh, they had some some um, views of no cars on the 405, which is not normal because you usually can't see any highway. Uh, so the, 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 the sea was back up with people trying to get into the beach. All right, I, I guess I... Alana. Your sound, you cut out, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Everything's trying to play, okay? Okay. So <clears throat> I dreamed last night about the sea and oh. it was almost as if like um, a combination of the Avengers and the X-Men. I don't know why Sometimes my spiritual gift always is around the X-Men and the Avengers or the Justice League, any type of like superhero sometimes. I'm not really clear on why yet, but I just go with it. So I had a dream and I saw people like, um, uh, like the ocean, but on one side of the ocean were people that hadn't been dipped yet. And then on the other side were people that actually had been dipped. And when they were coming in, rising in from out of the sea, they were coming and it looked like they were being reborn. And so it, you could tell the difference within it because the people that were, I guess, past dipped or previously dipped or not um, remade or made over or reborn, they had this pale type of um, look to them like it was old. And so the people that were coming in from the sea, they were all like, you know, if you had to look at it in terms of a lake, even though it was the actual ocean, there were people that were lined up all the way around it. And on each side of it, as one would come in, they all came in in collective groups side by side next to each other. And as they were coming in, it was like they were getting dipped and then coming from, from within the ocean, walking out and then standing as a collective side by side next to each other. So when Minister Kim contacted me and said, yeah, people emerging from the deep in the sea. And I was like, well, I just had a dream that the people are coming from within as if it's new water, if it's new life, if it's a new beginning, if it's a, a new earth, if you will. It's kind of like what I was seeing and they were glowing. So it's like the water that was like, you know, you know how it is when you come out of the, the beach or, you know, and the water's just dripping. It wasn't just dripping. It was like a slow drip at the same time as it was like sparkling, like all around the people that were being dipped. And then the other people on the other side that weren't being dipped, that weren't going in, or they were afraid to go in. It's like they were thirsty um but like uh like almost like desert type but they didn't want to get the water so it was like okay so are you gonna is someone gonna push you in or what are you doing you know at this point but i saw the people coming together collective as a whole uniting you know in that rebirth or you know um that that re-emerging and so one of the things that i know spirit has been dealing with me with the last couple of days is doing a topic on hiding, because there are a lot of people that are hiding. They're hiding from fear. They're hiding from personal sabotage. They're hiding from, you know, um, personal selves that they've made for themselves emotionally. And in that, they feel trapped. But there's an uprising that's coming that's getting them out of that cell. And I know that 
for me, it was like, I kept hearing, why are we hiding? Why are we hiding? We're hiding because of society. We're hiding because of what the government says. We're hiding because of whatever discipline, you know, that we've been uniformly conditioned to follow. We're hiding for all these different reasons. But at the same time, it's like the push to come out of hiding, the push to wake up, the push to move forward, right? So it's getting people in a place of where they feel like there's nowhere else to go. There's no more cells. The cells are being exposed. So if you were hiding behind a bush, it's like, <laughs> you know, the you're out there now. So there's no place for you to go. So getting people in that place of you're coming out, but you're also coming from within is what kind of what I was seeing. And I just, for the last whole week, have been seeing nothing but water and um, almost like a baptism, if you will, but a different type of baptism as these people are rising up. And they're not just rising up as regular people, they're rising up as like spiritual soldiers, spiritual warriors, you know, from what I'm seeing. Um, and so, yeah, I would encourage everybody to not deny what's coming, not deny the inevitable, because you're not, it's not really conditioned at this point where we are universally to be hidden. Yeah. Um, Prophetess Kamoy, do you want to go before I say anything? So um, it's interesting because I had a session with, um, I had a session with, um, uh, uh, I want to say, um, Beautiful. maybe I'm not even going to review her name. Let's just say mm -hmm. her. Um, I know she won't mind, but um, I'm just not going to reveal her name. But one of the things that we, we talked about um, in this particular session was channeling um, one of the energies from the deity, Yemenya. Okay. Now, if you know Yemenya, Yemenya is an ancient um, African deity, if I'm not mistaken. And she is um, um, goddess of the sea. And it's interesting because when I went to channel Yemenya's energy, I was telling the young lady, you know, I went in to channel her energy and, uh, you know, I saw a blue lady with like a, a mermaid fish thing. And then I didn't really stick around. You know, I just got out. She was like, oh my God, that was her, you know? Um, so what I noticed was the message may not have come through immediately when she came in, but it unfolded over a, um, a series of time. And not only did it unfold over a series of time throughout this week, but it's also bringing back into recollection some of the things that probably was being spoken to me a while back, okay? A while back, I had a conversation, and I think I even documented this in the live where I was telling people that Spirit kept telling me that I needed to build a submarine and go deep. Okay, so whereas some people was getting on their dragons and on their spaceship and flying into the heavens and stuff, Spirit just telling me, no, you need to go deep. You need to go in the water. And I didn't understand that. So I got on live and I was telling people, well, everybody, I built me a submarine and I'm going deep with it. And I laid, you know, like I, I laid, you know, I had my submarine. I think it was pink or whatever, like, but I literally built me a submarine in my mind's eye because I knew I was going deep, okay? Um. So that's coming back into remembrance now. But what they were trying to show to me is in order for you to get true healing, right? You cannot get there without first going deep. You can't. So if you are um, in the place where you want, um, if, if you're doing surface stuff or, you know, um, Lord forgive them for they know not what they do, but you're not going back in to see that that implant of that fear or that implant of that pain was when you were 12 when such and such said such and then this made you feel like such and then you grabbed this and then you've been carrying that for now what 30 something years if you're not going back to those places of healing especially within this time you're going to get you're going to get stuck or caught up in what i would like to call the spin right so the energy with yim and yah now i just want to tell y'all what she represents she represents an energy of protectiveness. She is a protector, okay, first of all. Um, and, and, and being a protector, she, get, she cares very deeply about uh, what she would consider to be her children, okay? Um, um, and not only that, she's also the type of energy that is about cleansing and healing pain and sorrow, okay? So it is not interesting to me that all of a sudden this energy is coming in like a wave because that is exactly what's going on now. We have an opportunity to cleanse. And, not, and, and then another thing, if you understand the representation of water, 
what it represents emotions, feelings, you know, purity, um, purification, you know, wisdom, knowledge. Like, so I feel like the time that we're in, if you are um, tuned in and tapped into what's going on within you, not, not really outside of you, you know, within you, you know, um, you can get a lot further. You really can. You can get a lot further. And then also what I can say to Prophet is come in the wave of this miscommunication energy and feelings, because we're coming into this Cancerian energy uh, with the summer solstice, right? It, and we talked about this this morning because um, we had a great conversation this morning where you were able to point out some selfishness within self, within myself today, right? Now, I'm also understanding that is not how these giftings are supposed to work. Right, this, this, like, if, if this energy, this, this wave of deep healing is supposed to come in, right? Yeah, this is not a selfish energy that's coming in. Right. Okay, it's not a selfish energy. Now, 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 and, and here's the paradox, but it is, right? So the paradox is, it's not a selfish energy, and, and I know I'm talking a lot. I'm sorry, I know I talk a lot. <laughs> it's, 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 when I say it's a paradox, right? Is the end energy is for you to be selfless and caring and give back right and be compassionate um and and, and now let me sideball here because i know when i say compassion some people think that means patting people in the back and no sometimes compassion is saying hell no back up off me you understand what i'm saying so I, I wanted to denote that right but but it's also about not being selfish in the way of being open to hear someone else's perspective and their pain you yeah. know and, 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 i'm sorry and, i have to say um that's one of the biggest problems that we have as a people um, to listen to one another and hear what I am saying. So many offenses come from the deep emotions that have been embedded in us throughout time and space of hurt. And we hear what our emotions are saying rather than what the people are saying to us. Yes. It's not like yours is any different than mine, but it's very important that we listen to each other in order to fill the gap of all of the sabotage and back stabbing that we have endured as a collective. Um, mm -hmm. This doesn't say that I'm talking about color. I'm saying collectively because all cultures, you know, we have in our family stabbed each other in the back. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah, we have. Uh, and, and I want to add the other paradox to that because the other paradox is you need to be selfish in your healing. Um, and when you're selfish in your healing, that means that you're looking at self first. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's the paradox, to be selfless but selfish at the same time, you know? Uh, so that's what I'm, I, I'm, I'm coming into the understanding of. The understanding of, and and because and how we got here is because Kim is so wise. <laughs> She caught me about this too. And I remember thinking, and, and now that I think about it, I, um, I didn't feel the urgency at that time until you know what happened, happened. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then when it happened, I got puffed up in my ego. Like, how dare they? Do they not know? You, you understand what I'm saying? Do they not know? And that was a paramount lesson in being able to be selfless, but selfish at the same time. You, you understand what I'm saying? Because that's where your power comes from. You know, when, you, when you're able to free yourself emotionally and then give someone else the opportunity to be freed emotionally also, that's where healing comes in. Right. It's not about your feeling is wrong and mine is right or, you know, my feeling is right. and you're, It's not about that. It's not about that at all. It is not about that at all is being able to listen and to respect and understand someone's perspective of their version of the same movie that you're also living. Same, the same movie, the same energy, you know? Now, now how are you healing with that? So that, that's what I wanted to add. It's interesting because Yemingya came through and then this is what she represents and all of a sudden we're dreaming about water, we're dreaming about people waking up consciously, you know? Um, yeah, it, it's a lot that's gonna be happening over the energy uh, this weekend. So I, I want to add this here to what you and Solana said, because I'm looking at the pictures and what I saw from the baptism, which, you know, or frequency has brought in um, 
the baptism where there's some that are standoffish, but some are getting this and some are not, you know? And then you spoke of the, um, the deity, Yemiyan, and going deep. Um, mm -hmm. The reason why most people are not getting baptized, uh, and it's not a religious thing, but they have to get baptized in order to get the crossing out of those emotions um, annihilated. The old emotions have to go in order for new, and that's what baptism um, brings on is a purging and a cleansing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if, you know, frequency is seeing this here and you guys, you and someone you're working with has seen going deep, this is actually um, a map for people. And then as they emerge, um, which is what I saw, and I knew when they came in and they were sitting down that they were ready to be taught the new life, the new birth as um, frequency said. But my concern is that leaders that are in the community of light workers and healers, they need to know that there's a backup. Mm. That, that means that. Oh, yeah. That the people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not. Yeah, not yeah. And that, yeah, I. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and if I can add something else there, um, um, uh, let me just take this here, because uh, you know, Prophet Kim, you have walked me through some stuff where um, me and the church may not have been uh, best friends, <laughs> you know, um, but I'm, I'm going to go biblical here for one second, right? And I, and I use the biblical aspect of things because that is the foundation in which I grew up on. Um, so, you know, even if you're, and, and now, let me just preface this with this does not mean, um, you know, you can find the same information in any type of doctrine that you're using. Yeah. Um, whether or not you're using the Quran, the, you know, the Kabbalah, there's always this source that you can tap into, right? There's always this overwhelming source that you can tap into, right? Now, when you look through these, um, these, these um these books of codes because I, I like to say they're book they're coded books right when you right. look at the book of codes it talked about um uh the three wise men which were astrologers right it talks about um someone that went and woke up one of the men in the village and asked him to go and wake up the dead okay so that's divination right um so the point i'm trying to make is we're coming into a times where your your reinforcement and your backup is going to be the realms in which um, some of that is going to be coming from the realms in which they told us may have been evil or the realms that they told us maybe only the priests had access to, you know, or, or, or the realms in which they said maybe only demons live. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's what we were taught. We were not taught that these are portals of energy that we can unlock within self to help others and help the collective, right? So, uh, and I have to be honest with you, like, we're coming into the times right now where, um, Everything that was hidden from us um, to control us is going to be broken. Hence, um, the things that we may deem as magical and supernatural, you know, or someone, um, you know, um, 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 being psychic, you know, um, we're coming into a time where these are really going to be the people that you're going to be reaching out for, for guidance and for, you, you, you know, uh, what was once deemed, um, um, uh, which is taboo or, uh, or maybe even um, um, demonic, uh, that is coming back into this. No, this has been your spiritual sovereignty. This was just hidden in, hid, hidden from, from you and misused, you know? Now, I want to preface this by saying this because I just got off the live and I, I, um, I want to say this too because what I just said may immediately tell, you know, some people may go, okay, um, well, um, I learned that magic is evil and you're, you're not supposed to do that, you know? So um, let me just verify to you a form of magic in which uh, most ch churchgoers do and they're not even aware of it. So when you get down on your knees and you pray for something, what do you think you're doing? That's magic. They don't teach you that that's magic. But if you're getting on your knees or you're doing this and you're praying and you're asking for something and then you reinforce that by believing that God is going to give it to you, you just you just perform magic. 
right? You just pulled something out of the ethers, right? And, and, and brought it into this third dimensional realm. But because we're not taught in the construct of how that actually happens, right? And, and, and not only is praying, not only the only way that you can manifest and bring things into this realm, but we don't know we're afraid of. So therefore we're taught to, to be afraid of what we don't know. But we're coming back into a season that the things that we know innately and the things that we know in our Akashic records, right? And there's also the scripture where where God told the prophet to go into the village and he told him, gave him clear instruction. I think he said, go into the village and do X, Y, Z and leave this way, but don't leave that way. I don't know if you, you know that. I can't remember, which, but, but you know, um, and he doesn't listen. He doesn't listen. He goes in and he does what he was told, but he didn't listen how to exit, you know? And this is what people don't understand. You need to listen to yourselves. You understand what I'm saying? You need to listen to yourselves. This is where all of this information is going to come from. This is where God resides. And it's there. The Bible tells you the kingdom of heaven is within you, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. But then it also tells you the kingdom of heaven is within you. Then it also tells you God has secrets. But who does a person share secrets with, right? You're not sharing your secrets with somebody you don't trust. Like, I mean, I, I'm not, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm noticing there's a sense of maturity also with this awakening that's happening, right? Where I feel like people are noticing not only are you responsible for what you take in, you know, consciously, um, or what you take in spiritually or emotionally or even physically, right, on all levels, but you're also responsible for what you put out, you know. I think people are going to learn there's a balance or there's an exchange, right? Um, what you may conceive to be karma um, that, that you now know is cause and effect, and cause and effect is produced by habits, you know? So a lot of these generational curses that we are now breaking are bad habits throughout family history and, and family structure and us being repeated things because you didn't want to deal with stuff. So mommy didn't want to deal with the fact that she might have gotten molested. So now she's teaching how to hate men because she doesn't know what it feels like to be loved. So the only thing she knows is how to be misused by men. So therefore love is not real unless men mistreat you. Right. And then you come along and you teach that to your daughter. And then your daughter comes along and your daughter teaches that to her Daughter. This is where the generational curse comes from. It's a bad habit or aka a trauma that was not broken in a life cycle that a lot of us now have not awoken to the point that okay, it's our turn to stop this shit. Ooh, you know, like it is our time to shut this down. So that's what's happening now. This wave that's coming in is it's, it's not only a wave of consciousness, but it's also a wave of people healing what we may be considered to be generational curses or generational habits. And this is not just happening on a physical level. I'm talking about this is happening on a DNA molecular level. Yeah. Right. Okay. So this is happening on a C. Yes. Mother is the C. Everything yes. that has to do with the water, even if we talk about Neptune and the planetary aspect, mother carries a baby in the water. The baby is surrounded by water, so you have the earth saturated with millions of people coming out of the water. Right. Mother. To, to add to what Kamoy said, because that was on point, um, and that was certainly what I had gotten, um, I want to say it was a little over a month ago or so, is the the change that was coming and the, and the various waves that we were going to be experiencing was, you know, everything that you thought was, wasn't everything that you were taught at school. Wasn't, it was almost as if, you know, spirits coming in saying, okay, I need you to um, be okay right now. in your in your spirit that you've been lied to and in you being lied to, you have, you know, adapted to certain behaviors that you thought were healthy, that are no longer healthy, that we need to recalibrate. We need to, you know, dig deep, you know, to um, rechange everything. And people were lost. Don't be lost in the awakening. Don't be lost in the fact that you've been lied to. Embrace that you now know the truth. Because it was like, okay, so if the very structure of the way mankind does things. So if you know, right now the sun is out, so that's now day, that's now morning, okay, but the night is night. It was almost as if we were doing everything in reverse. So night became day, day became night. So everything that you thought was, isn't. Everything that will be coming in is. And getting into that, you know, even further, 
people didn't know really know what they were going to believe in anymore because everything that they thought even from a child when you felt that spirit when you felt like that word when you felt like you heard god when you felt like you saw something you were told that it was wrong you were told that you know hey nope that's sorcery nope that's magical nope god is not in that all of those things that you you know denied because of the way of the conditioning and the control of the way that we needed to be well, i won't say needed to be i will say that certain aspects of um certain uh entities if you will felt the need to suppress the very gifts that god said that he left us with right so if he left us with these god with with these gifts and god is in you then of course you know just like anything else i have to go back to you know mutants and everything else because that's my reference right they try to suppress their abilities that actually impact the earth they impact humanity they help one another and so the recalibration of the earth itself is necessary so i understand that some people are scared and they're afraid and you know why is this happening why is that is ha why is that happening if you look at how the power of one it becomes infectious so if you're dysfunctional or if you have generational um uh dealings you know that you've contributed to or even that you have received from a prior generation at some point the balance of life the circle of life things have to balance itself out it has to recalibrate so while hurtful yes that you may have to deal with or even the exposure of things that you were told that were a lie don't be don't be afraid and don't harp on we've been lied to harp on the fact that now you know the truth and at least whether you wrote about it in the past, whether you, you know, you know, did a did a particular poem or wrote a book or wrote a story or whatever it was, even if it was artwork centered around something that you intuitively felt, right? Remember that it was with you the entire time. It was just suppressed. That's all it was. And so we're going to come into this consciousness where yes, there's going to be a lot. And I know for some of you, even even myself, like having an understanding that just because you were conditioned or programmed right that does not mean that that's where you were to be your most effective that wasn't even your calling you were just being conditioned and in that conditioning is a release and that release is your healing and that healing you can be proactive and move forward but you can't do that if you think that this next wave that's coming in consciously there is no escaping it is universal it is for everybody um and those that are able to be a part it'll be um a harmonious thing to get us back to where we were supposed to be instead of uh the ongoing stagnant energy the the rebuilding of more generational you know issues that are co super compounded to where you know you know just like anything else if you're running a race in the olympics and you know they Give you, now you're holding the torch okay if you don't complete it goes on to the next person so you have to look at all those races from that prior time that are now coming into present time it's more of an opportunity right not so much as you think it is as a punishment but an opportunity to free up everything moving forward and everything that's like behind you so the exposure that's coming don't be upset about it. Be grateful that the opportunity is uprising so that you can finally be in line with what you probably already knew or what you felt, what your gut was telling you that you denied and know that you're internally impactful and that it takes one. It takes one person to, be, to become infectious, spiritually, monumentally, all of that. And so I just wanted to add that because that would, um, uh, Prophetess Kamoi was saying was something that I know I saw myself was like, you know, we were having some deep, deep exposure on things that have been hidden and things that we've been taught that are wrong, you know, and it can be conflicting because, you know, now it's, it's playing with your mind, you know, and you're, you're having the question, okay, well, consciously, am I, am I crazy or consciously like what, what is happening here with me? There's nothing happening. It's just that it was the programming. Well, now we're set for a new type of programming that has no limits. That's what I would like to say. No limits. So I want to go back to the C because everybody has that revelation and 
I want to make sure that people that are listening understand the difference in going into the water, into the deep, and those that stand and they they deny the ability to go in. So what happens is, is that all of us have this story and some of it don't have it in the way that I'm going to tell it. But Yolanda Adams sings a song and she, she speaks of the phrase, I was sinking deep within sin. And sin is the lack of truth, making mistakes. Anybody that awakens to the truth are set free. Free from what? The conditions, again, the matrix, um, all of the things that they thought was. And I reiterate off of what you said and what um, Prophetess Kamoy has said. Uh, this is a new beginning because what you didn't know, you will know now. It's the time to release old stuff and to move into a new, it's like the void. The void is there when we let go. If we don't let go, the, the um, what happens is, is that you can have a, a nervous breakdown, you can get sick, you can die because the void is the empty space. The void is like when you go to the bathroom and you eliminate. You eliminate out of your body because if you don't, you will die from the void staying inside the body. So when a person comes to a place where they need to let go of stuff, they either make that choice, they stand on one side of the beach, or they go into the deep and they get the submerging that they need into the hands of mother. The womb of the earth has a place of water that is going to wash, and it could take some time. So I sunk into sin because I made the choices. Now, you don't have a choice in this. Now, I'm going to say that. Because after so much of that, and you disregard the fact that you need that wash, you can go to the bathtub and wash all you want to. But if your soul is not freed up, you're either going to die or you're going to lose your mind. And that is the truth. Ain't no other place. So all of this is, Providence Kamoy spoke of karma. This is the choices of negative. All of us have made. And the reason why we can have these dreams or even think of it is not because we're any different from anybody else, but it's because the experiences have taught us that there is something greater than us. The ego must die. The ego is the trash that takes you into the deep. You can fight all you want to, right? So she said, I was sinking deep in sin. Water can be positive and it can be negative. When you go to the flood, the reason why Noah had to build the ark is because the people were out of order. They didn't even listen when they had the chance to go in. Same kind of, you know, conversation that we're talking about. However, this is not about religion. This is about the water bearer. The water bearer coming and saying, I got some new stuff for you. Times have changed. Women have been discriminated against. People have went to court. They've been unjustly um, accused. They've been treated like nothing in court. The judicial system and the judges are thinking deep within their own sin. I will say it because somebody needs to tell them, okay, we got people across the board that have been killed, but hey, we got men and women that got child support tickets and they can't even get uh, a job. They can't even get a car. They can't do nothing with credit. Now, Somebody might say, well, you kind of deviate. No, I'm not. Because it's the sins of the world and capitalism that has caused people to have to go into places of mental brokenness and go into the waters to be washed and saved by the master of the sea. If it's uh, Yamayo, you know who I'm saying, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the master of the sea, or if it's um, Kuan Yin waiting for them to come out, or you know, um, Lao Tzu, or any it, the thing is, it's a setup. So I had to go in, and I don't want people to think that um, it's just you. Some of us have been set up to fail, some of us have been set up to fail, and in that failure. There is a rescue, and you shall know the truth, and you should you should be you you should be set free. So the people that I saw sitting before me in the dream were people that were ready to be taught, and that's where I come to an end with what I have to say. If there's anybody out there that needs that help, we we're here for personal development to help you through that cycle where you're coming out of. The water and you've been washed and you can go on to resume the new life that you deserve all right are you guys there yeah i'm here can you hear me okay. i, I want to just add something that you said brother is kind of see because i think for me this is where i started out on the quest of my own healing Okay, like, like real talk. And I did my, um, uh, people all the time told me how you came into my life because you told me at one point exactly what I'm doing, I will be doing. And I remember telling you, oh, no, um, no, I want to learn this shit for me. You know, right. right? This is all about me, right? Um, what I didn't know was when you, you know, working with energy, light work, being an empath, being a gatekeeper, any, anything that, that has to do with man in the spiritual realm what people don't understand is you gotta pay the price for that you yeah. have to pay a cost for that okay that is very costly okay yeah which means that the early walk of this is usually a very painful walk there's a lot of heartache there's a lot of heartbreak there's a lot of loneliness there's a lot of isolation yeah. there's a lot of doubt there's a lot of okay crying out there is so much happening okay Okay, Mr. Rabbit, you got to move on out the street. I don't want to run over you, baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that, y'all. Right. Um, uh, and that's another thing that I noticed even with your spiritual development. You become... The recording is like going in and out. Animals where you don't want to hurt an animal. But anyway... Next, um, I say all of that to say, get into a place within your own growth and your own. It's not about any law where you're not, what you have, what you don't have, right? Um, and then I also get this too, you know. I, I think one of the things that I was taught um, all of the time that, you know, when you're a sinner, you are the worst person in the whole wide world, you know. Um, and coming into the greater understanding of even what you do and the dynamics of what you do, sin is, is nothing other than you missing the mark or not being able right. to take the mistakes and go back and use them for, for the shit that you missed. You understand what I'm saying? That, that's simply what sin is. Going back and taking the thing that you may have missed the first time around, right? And applying them this time around, right? It's not about keeping you stuck or keeping you um, um, boggled down, right? So now that we have that information, like you said, Prophet is Kim, right? A lot of us get stuck in what would be considered sin because you are not being true to who you are. You're not. You're not being true to who you are. You're not owning your crap, right? And I'm right. not saying... And, and, and I don't mean to be harsh. Like, yeah, I do mean to be harsh. Let me, let me, let me stop lying. I do mean to be harsh uh, because we're in harsh times, okay? We're in harsh times. Yeah, and the experience that I had last night was like a wake-up call of, this is not a joke. This is not a joke, you know? If you are not stepping into what you are called to do now spiritually, you're putting your own life in danger, and then you're not, you're not there on, on the behalf of other people, right, that would need you, right? Yes. Um, that would need you. Oh, I have to back out. That would need you to intercede on their behalf. You're, you're not there anymore. You're not there. So that you're not in position. So how can we properly protect you, right? How can we properly protect you when you're not in position? You're not man in the field. You're not in position. So how are we? How are we protecting you, right? How are we protecting? How, how are we doing that? 
we can't do that. We, we, you know, there's not a doing of that. You, you understand what I'm saying? So everybody right. needs to be mindful. We are in the times, definitely in a time where you need to be in position. This is not a joke anymore. This is not a game anymore. You can look at real time and real reality. Turn on the news. Turn on the TV. You, you understand what I'm saying? That is the best way for you to get a really good clue on what's happening right now. You know, please. Right. This, this, yeah. Don't run from your pain. Run, don't run, run into the pain so you can come through the pain. Right. So I, I want to um, add that um, you guys have your um, channels. And um, I um, brought the, the three of us together so that people can know um, from different point of views that we're all having the same type of dreams and there's probably more out there that would listen um, and hear that what they saw or dreamt is not just something that they saw or dreamt is collective because there is a um, need for people to um, understand what they're going through emotionally and to release it and then come up and find um, communities that can assist them in the healing process. And that's what we all had the ability to do, just a little bit different, not a church kind of thing. And so um, I would let um, each young lady give you their email address. If you need any personal development, um, the readings, um, then you can reach out to them and I'll give my information afterwards. So which one of y'all wanna go first with that? I just wanted to add something really quick, Ms. Kim, before we... Okay. Um close out is um, <clears throat> I am also uh, one of Miss Kim's students and I mean I had a very intense journey I mean intense and you know <clears throat> it's not to say that what we learn in the church is is bad but when I can tell you it could also be crippling because if you're gifted and you're yeah. dealing with you know what you've been conditioned to do um, from the church's perception or what they have deemed the Bible to be based on their perception. I mean, not only will you suppress your gift, but you will constantly, I mean, constantly, it's like a constant like butt whooping, right? From spirit because you're not in line with your gift and it can be cryptic and it can be confusing and you can overthink it, you know, to the place where I like, like for example, for where I am right now, like, you know, my journey has always been like, oh, well, we can all collectively come together. Let's all go, right? But the part about the people that are being dipped versus the people that are still sitting there that are not being dipped, you don't really get a pass if you're gifted. So now you're putting yourself in harm's way and you're opening up yourself to so many different things that eventually at some point, the universe spirit, they're gonna have their way, you know, with you because you're gifted to do so you're gifted to move forward and you know if you're out there and you're confused or you're you you don't feel like you belong somewhere that's why i said i keep coming back to like the avengers that you know the x-men the justice league they could enroll with everybody and that was a very very hard acceptance that I had to get to as of recently, that as much as you want people to jump on board with you consciously, where you are, they may not be there yet. And it's okay if they're not there yet. But what's important is that your collective, whether X-Men, Justice League, Avengers, right, Unite, then you have to because the power and the numbers and the ability to reproduce right and help teach and bring that other consciousness into a, a bit of awakening and so i've worked with miss kim for a very very long time and i can tell you that this time that we're in we've been talking about this time for a very very long time you know um and so now it's here so there really isn't a lot of time to think it's a joke or to you know gamble with your life and to gamble with the responsibility that you have for your gift because there are others out there universally that are going to be counting on you so if you're out there and you feel like you're quirky or not accepted or you know people have not been able to be in line with how you see things because your consciousness has always been different from day one 
then reach out to us. You know, um, we'd love to have you. So I just wanted to add that. And my email is thefrequency at gmail.com and I'm at uh, frequency on Instagram. All right, all right. So yeah, I like the fact that you brought up somebody's waiting on you. I mean, hey, it goes back into antiquity. Joseph talked about it when he was a <laughs> prime minister. Somebody's waiting. And so I'm, a, I'm an influencer uh, when it comes to letting people know somebody's waiting on you. I ain't got time for all of that judgment and jealous stuff. Somebody's waiting on you people. So uh, Prophet Samoy, your information. Can you hear me? I think she may have cut out. Yeah, they're waiting on you um, because you have a story for them and it's not the stories that you heard in buildings. It's the stories that you experienced in the streets. It's the stories that are not being told about the justice system. The judicial system. That's right. So that's one of the other things. You know, I do want to come back uh, with people that have been unjustly served. And listen, we all make mistakes. It does not mean that man has the ability or should have the ability um, to slowly take your breath away. That's God's domain. It's not man's. And so um, the ridiculing and the ostracizing, um, yeah, no. So is Prophetess Kamora, are you with us? She's not, but her YouTube okay. channel is For Your Inner Voice. Great. Uh -huh. it, her YouTube channel, um, and you can check her out there on YouTube. She has, um, you know, frequent videos as well as uh, Kim Warner. And like I said, I'll be coming right behind you guys um, with my videos as well. Definitely, definitely stay in tune for uh, the fall of the, the judicial system, you know, on that segment. And just know that be encouraged. I mean, those of you that have had challenges with the judicial system, it's like, you know, double edge. You get to be judged by the judicial system and then you get to be judged by people that are close within your circle. But there's also freedom in that and there's a liberation that you need to be focusing on that you may not be um, because it may feel like a double defeat. Yeah, so no hope. You do have hope because a lot of people like have said, oh, things will never change. It'll always be the same. I think that that mindset was because the people had their hearts in what man can do. Remember in Samuel, God asked the people, do you really want a king? And so this is the outcome of having kings and leaders. Now, if you got a king and a leader that is liberal and they understand that the underdog should not be the underdog, that life should be balanced, and that's where we are right now. That's what we are talking about. There's never a dictatorship where people are lacking. And you see so many homeless people in America. Are you kidding me? Now, I know that it's a lot of people out there that don't care about somebody that's homeless, but guess what? Every one of us are treading on that their doorstep right now if we keep dealing with the economy that they serve. You're not just dealing with people that's dying. You're dealing with people not working. You're dealing with people living in the streets of, of, of America where it's supposed to be freedom. And so when I look at collective coming out of an ocean and the way that it was and it's backed up, we need leaders and teachers to begin to tap into the realm of truth. And I'm not saying that some of them, uh, depending on your consciousness, you're going to be able to teach different, different areas and levels, but there's not one level according to God. Some people have actually made other people think that their ministry is the way. No, you elevate from, from level to level and glory to glory. And maybe, just maybe, that could be that you're going from Christianity to Buddhism or Buddhism to Christianity. No one knows but God. But where did separation and divide come from in the church? So I'll say this here, last standing. My email address is ifwbuilders at gmail.com and we have a website, www.ifwbuilders at gmail, I mean, dot com, ifwbuilders.com. I don't know, can you hear me, Brian? I don't know, outreach. And, and that outreach supports those that 
are um, in need. Financially, yes, we do take in donations and we help people that are out there. We've been doing it for a decade. And so you can reach me there. Providence Kamoy, you giving your, your information now? Um, yeah, I just want to say one thing because I don't know. I heard Talona, I got dropped from the phone. Yeah. Okay. I heard. It's where you are. Yeah, we're still having a hard time hearing you. It's where you are. I'm um, just talking about where, what she saw. Hear me? Uh, no, we can't. <laughs> okay. Trees. okay, is this a little better? It gave me another ball. <laughs> a little bit better, yeah. Okay. Um, so let me let me do this um, first. Let me just say you can find me on YouTube at the number four your inner voice. Okay. Uh, and my email address is going to be the number four, your inner voice at gmail.com, all one word, okay? Um, I do offer coaching sessions. I also offer uh, Reiki energy healing sessions. Um, uh, and I really, my goal here is to use whatever gifting and whatever level is to um, help set other people um, free. Can't do that work for you, but I can help assist you um, in giving you the tools, you know, um, whether it's spiritually or maybe even some physical tools that you can use in your toolkit uh, to help unlock. That's all I have to say about this now. Amen. All right. Talana, you were saying something and then we'll let the people go. We can come back. Um, no, I was just saying that, you know, if you're out there and um, you want to be a part, definitely come forward. Okay. All right. So we'll be back on um, another time. Um, we do have a class on the North Nodes in Gemini tomorrow, which is Friday the 19th at 2 o'clock. And so if you want to be a part of that, you're welcome. I think I said it right. And um, so that will be an hour. And um, I'll put the information on the price for the class. Uh, we have another one coming up next week. Um, that information will be in there as well. It will be Friday at 2 as well. And so um, thanks for listening. And anything that we can do to help, give us a shout out. All right. God bless everybody. Thanks, ladies. Bless you guys. Beautiful ladies for coming on today. And um, you're awesome. Bye-bye. Bye. You done recording this, Kim? <laughs>